Today through this video we are going to learn how we can make a reverse forward starter in that what will happen is when we press push button contactor will turn on and on releasing this contactor will turn off. Now I want that on pressing push button once contactor gets hold then for this we will use a auto manual selector switch here. What will happen is when we select auto position in this and after this if we press push button then contactor gets hold. It means on pressing push button once motor will run in reverse direction. So today's topic of this video is control wiring of reverse forward starter with auto manual selector switch. Okay then let's start the video. Friends whenever you go for wiring then before wiring you must draw a circuit diagram on a paper. So I made a circuit diagram here. You can see in this these two contactor here to both these contactor neutral power is supplied directly. So to set time I already connected neutral power supply. Neutral power supply is connected with A2 terminal of this contactor. After this what we have to do this phase supply here phase supply will directly go to NC contact of overload relay. It means this MCB here from this MCB where we get phase supply with this phase supply you have to connect one wire. Now other end of this wire will be connected to NC contact of overload relay. This is our NC contact. Among these two terminals connect the wire with any one. Right now I connected this wire with 95 number terminal. After this what we have to do from this NC contact power supply which will go will go to stop push button. This is our NC contact of overload relay. So with this NC contact I connected this wire. Now power supply which will go from here will go to stop push button. So I'm providing incoming power supply to stop push button. Now from this stop push button power supply which goes will go to push button to turn on these two contactors. For this what we will do this forward push button here through this push button we will turn on this contactor. So for this what we will do take this wire and connect this wire with output terminal of stop push button. Now power supply which will go will go to forward push button. Now at output terminal of this same stop push button you have to connect one more wire. So I am connecting this wire. Now take this wire and provide input power supply to reverse push button. So in this way we will connect this wire. After this what we will do from output terminal of this push button power supply which goes will go to NC contact of reverse contactor that is this contactor here to NC contact of this contactor power supply will go from this push button. After this power supply will return to forward contactor. Similarly it is done in this circuit also. Here also in between NC contact of forward contactor is used. So between these two reverse forward contactor we have to use interlocking. We use interlocking so that forward contactor here and reverse contactor here both must not turn on together. If by mistake both the contactors turned on together then short circuit will be there. So for this protection we do interlocking here. As you can see this contactor here in both these contactors there is no NC contact only NO contact is there. So this is why I am using Adam block here. In this here is NO contact and here is NC contact. So we will use this NC contact for interlocking. So I am connecting this Adam block with this contactor. In reverse contactor also we will connect a Adam block. Now as I told you this forward contactor here push button which is used for this contactor with output terminal of this push button wire which is going to be connected power supply through this will go to NC contact of reverse contactor. This is our reverse contactor and NC contact of this is this one. Similarly to turn on reverse contactor push button which we are using with output terminal of this connect one more wire take other end of this wire and connect with NC contact here which must be a forward contactor. Now what we have to do this NC contact here with output terminal of NC contact connect one wire so I am connecting this red wire. Take other end of this wire and in this contactor with A1 terminal connect this wire. Similarly NC contact of forward contactor is there with this NC contact connect a wire. Now power supply which goes through this wire will go to turn on reverse contactor. So I am connecting this wire also with A1 terminal. So without holding circuit reverse forward starter is completed. Let's check this once. Now I am turning on the MCB. Now this forward push button here on pressing this push button this contactor must turn on. So I am pressing this. On pressing this you can see this contactor turned on. You can see. On releasing this contactor will turn off. On pressing this contactor on. On releasing this contactor off. Similarly if we press this push button then reverse contactor will turn on. And on releasing this contactor will turn off. 
So this reverse forward starter we made just now, we call this as inching reverse forward starter. What happened in this is, till the time we press this push button, only for this time contactor will remain on. And when we release this, contactor will be turned off. Now you want that after pressing this push button, contactor will turn on, but on releasing button, contactor remain hold. For this, you have to make holding circuit. But I am going to do something here, that by both ways, I can turn on this contactor. That is, if button remain pressed, contactor remain on. And if I want that just by pressing push button once, contactor remain on, so for this also, we can make circuit. For this, you need to use a selector switch here. Selector switch will be called as auto manual selector switch. To modify circuit, you have to see this circuit diagram. In the circuit diagram, you can see this stop push button here. Power supply which is going from here is going to forward push button, reverse push button and to common terminal of selector switch. It means from output terminal of stop push button, power supply must go to common terminal of selector switch. At output terminal of this stop push button, already two wires are connected, we cannot connect one more wire here. Whenever you go for wiring, always keep one thing in your mind that at any terminal, never connect three wires. For this, what we will do, this push button here, to this push button, power supply is coming from this point only, it means power supply of this point will be at this point also. So from this point, connect a wire and provide input power supply to this selector switch. I am using a wire here. Take this wire and connect with incoming terminal of this push button. Now where the output power supply is going to be connected in this selector switch, let's understand this. Look, this selector switch we have, if selector switch is only for auto manual position, then in this condition, you will find 4 terminals at the back side. Now how to find which terminal we have to use, then for this, you have to take simple method. What you have to do, selector switch here, keep this selector switch at auto position. We have to use one number position for auto. After this, take the multimeter and put this multimeter in continuity position. After selecting continuity position, what you have to do, at the back side of selector switch, you have to check on which two terminals you are getting continuity. So first check this. You can see here, A1 and 1 number terminal, at these two terminals we are getting continuity. You can hear the beep sound, along with this, it is showing very less resistance. So we got that selector switch here, on keeping this at one number position, between one number terminal and even terminal, we will get continuity at these two terminals. Let's check this also by turning this off. We will check again. Right now we must not get continuity. We connected the probes of multimeter, you can see, there is no continuity. So we have to use these two terminals. To provide power supply to this selector switch, wire we connected, Take this wire and with A1 terminal of selector switch or with one number terminal, connect this wire with any one among these. Now this selector switch here, NC contact of this, I mean when we select auto position in this, then power supply which goes will go to NO contact of forward push button and to NO contact of reverse contactor. So we will use these two wires here. Take these wires and in selector switch with one number terminal, connect these two wires. After this, take one wire among these and in reverse contactor with NO contact connect this wire. Similarly take second wire and with NO terminal of forward contactor connect this wire. In this way we will do the connection. Now only final wiring is left. What we have to do, NO contact here, from NO contact output power supply which goes will be connected to output terminal of push button. Similarly NO contact of reverse contactor here. Output power supply which goes from this NO contact will go to output terminal of reverse start push button. So what we are going to do, this forward contactor here, from NO contact of this power supply which is going, we have to connect this with output terminal of this push button. But already a wire connected from here to this point. So what we will do, connect one wire from here to this point. For this, I am using this wire. Take one end of this wire and connect with NO contact. After this, take this output power supply and connect with this NC contact, to which power supply is coming from output terminal of forward push button. Similarly, there is a NO contact of reverse contactor. At output terminal of this NO contact, connect a wire. Now take this wire and to turn on this contactor, push button which is here, connect this wire with output terminal of this push button. Now at this same output terminal, already a wire is connected, which is connected at this point. So with this terminal, I am connecting this wire. And incoming power supply will be from this NO contact. 
Friends, by using auto manual selector switch, we did control wiring of reverse forward starter. Now we have to do trial. Before trial, these two contactors here. With these two contactors, I am connecting two lamps so that when contactor turn on, then along with this lamp also turn on. Now first of all, we will turn on the MCB. After turning on MCB, if I want to turn on forward contactor, then for this I have to press forward push button. So I am pressing this. On pressing this, you can see contactor turned on and on releasing this contactor turned off. Till the time we press this contactor will remain on, on releasing this contactor will turn off. Similarly, if I want to turn on reverse contactor, that is if motor is there and I want to run motor in reverse direction, then for this I have to press this push button. On pressing this, you can see contactor turned on. On releasing this, contactor will turn off. Let's see once more. On pressing push button, contactor turned on. On releasing push button, contactor turned off. Now you want that this contactor here, just by pressing push button once, contactor must remain on till we don't press stop push button. Then for this, what you have to do, you have to select auto position in selector switch. Now when I press forward push button, then you can see on releasing button, still contactor is on. This contactor will remain on till we don't press stop push button. On pressing this, contactor will turn off. Similarly, if we want to turn on reverse contactor, then we will press this. And to turn off this, we have to press this push button. Now understand this once more interlocking which we did here. See, I turned on forward contactor. Now if you even press this push button, then also this reverse contactor won't turn on till this forward contactor remain on. So you can see interlocking is working properly. I'm turning off this. So friends, you learned the control wiring of reverse forward starter. Now how to connect motor? If you want to learn, then click on the right hand side video to watch. Thanks for watching this video.